I really pray today I do a great job at explicating what I feel. Have you ever had a word on you and you were so ready to preach it or so ready to share it, but you didn't want to mess it up? I'm really excited about today's word because I really feel in the season that you're currently in and where God is taking you, this word will be tantamount to your development. Acts chapter 14, verse 20. I want to read from the NLT version. But as the believers gathered around him, this is enough to shout alone. He got up. I don't think you heard me. When the believers gathered around him, he got up and went back into the town. Look at somebody around you and say, do me one favor, please. Don't leave me down. Sit down. Don't leave me down. And every person who's ready to get up said, amen. Y'all pray for your pastor. I was blessed to be in a movie on last week on BET, and it was my first movie. I might be up for an Oscar next year. I don't know. God willing. Uh, they're saying people like me, Danny Glover, Denzel, Danzim Idris. We're just taking acting to another level right now. I just want to be your pastor, but you know, this face belongs on the tissue. My millennials don't even know nothing about Martin right there. No, nah, man, so it was so funny. I never auditioned for it. Literally, the lady who was directing the movie watches the church. And she said, I'm going to get my pastor to play this role, an ex-gangster turned pastor. Now, I don't have a thug bone in my body. Somebody said he wasn't even acting. He was just acting like himself the whole time. Well, what's happening now is I guess it went so well, people are starting to call me, right? And we called me and said, Pastor, we got a role we want you to play. We think you'll kill it, but are you afraid to venture off from just being a pastor? And I'm swagging. I'm like, yeah, man, what you need? I can do nothing. You know, no, no, I'm putting cases on all y'all. I, I said, what you want to do? I can do it. Like, what you want to do? And they said, Pastor, we want you to play a police officer. I was like, I'm from Hensley. I can't play the feds. You trying to, <laughs> they're going to put me out of Birmingham. You know where I live? They was like, no, we got a roll, man. They're going to they gonna be a gun scene, and they're going to be shooting. You're going to kick the door open, boom, fire your gun. Then you're going to hide behind a dresser, and you're going to yell, we need backup. I was like, okay. That's like, that's it. I was like, what? That's all I'm going to do? That's like, yeah. I said, well, I'm not really trying to be an actor. That was just something that was special. I said, no, thank you. They said, no, just try it one time on the phone. I'm on the phone. We need backup. That's like, you're a natural, man. Let's do this. And I was like, no, thank you, man. Between the church and music and these kids and family, I don't have the time to do that. It was something that was fun. And I hung up the phone, walking around the house all day. Uh, who wants something to eat? I'm like, we need backup. <laughs> like in my head, I was a superhero police officer. I did a couple push-ups to see what I would look like in my bulletproof vest. And I was tripping because I have no intents on doing that. But as I was preparing the message, it made me think about you. And what if I told you that God's about to do so much in your life that you're going to have to send a call out, I need backup. <laughs> to all my entrepreneurs, what would you do if your invoices got so deep you had to stop and say, I need backup. I'm going to put scripture on it. Give and it will come back to you. Good measure. Press down shaking together, running over. See your neighbor and shout because they're not expecting all of what you expected. But if you got an expectation of overflow, that's where you ought to just shout, I need backup. And I'm excited about that because we the culture says we need backup. But here at Rock City, we say it like this. You can't rock alone. That's not just a saying here at Rock City. Here at Rock City, it is a biblical truth. The first thing that God called not good was the fact that man was alone. When you look at the creation narrative in the book of Genesis or the book of beginnings, he said, let there be light and it was good. Let there be this and it was good. Let us separate the night from the day, crawling things from swimming things and it was good. Then he looks at Adam by himself and for the first time he says, that's not 
Good. In the book of Genesis, in Genesis 1, good, please put this in your notes, means functional. Mm. Good means functional. So when God said, let there be light, and the light came on, and it stayed on, he said, now that's functional. When he saw stuff flying, he said, that's functional. When he saw stuff swimming, he said, that's functional. But when he saw man by himself, he says that is not good. And if good is functional, not good is what? Dysfunctional. So he says, I need you to understand that I did not create you to be by yourself. And when he says man is dysfunctional, he is not talking about who he is as a person. No, because in the next chapter, he gives the man a decree. He looks at Adam and he looks at Eve. He says, have dominion, subdue. This was last week's scripture, take over. So when he calls man dysfunctional, he is not calling man dysfunctional because of who he is. What he's saying is, according to what I got in store for you, you can't function at the level you need to function by yourself. I'm going to say this, and only three people in the balcony and ten folk online going to catch this. You cool being by yourself. God bless you. You want to be a lone wolf? You don't want no friends? You don't fool with nobody? You want to wake up, go to bed by yourself, go to lunch by yourself, go on vacation by yourself, go to the movies by yourself? God bless you. But I need some help. Because the assignment, that's rich, that God has put in my life is too big. For me to carry by myself. See, it's cool being by yourself when you only want stuff for you. But when your vision is so big that you can help bless everybody around you, am I preaching to anybody? He said it is not good. And if good is functional, not good is what? Dysfunctional. Let me free you. It shows me the power of partnership. He tells Adam, I got so much mm, in store for you, I got to get you the right partner. I got so much in store for you, I got to get you the right partner. And notice God <laughs> does not let Adam pick his partner. But whether God says, I'm going to pick for you, because if I let you pick for you, you're going to pick what's attractive but can't handle no weight. I'm going to say this and only six of y'all going to catch it. God, I've been picking for 30 years. For the next three months, it's on you. Because I need somebody who can help me not just be who I am, but carry what I'm trying to. Partnership. Somebody say partnership. Now notice Adam is in the garden and the snake or the devil, because we know the devil uses the snake. You understand that the, de the devil uses the snake anything operating on earth without a body is illegal anything operating on earth without a body is illegal that's why you are afraid of ghosts because ghosts don't have a body it's just a spirit so anything that's going to operate on earth needs a earth suit it needs a body. So the devil is roaming to and fro, trying to figure out how he can ruin this. He can't show up because he does not have a body. So what does he do? He enters into the body of a snake. The snake, and the Bible teaches us, is walking upright before the devil got in him. And after the devil uses the snake, now the snake is cursed to slither on his belly. Be careful who you let use you. Pastor Mike, God sent somebody into my life. First off, don't say God sent them. You don't know if God sent them till you can examine if your posture changed. Michael! If I was like this before you, now I'm struggling after you. You may not have been sent by God. Because the people God sent in your life don't break your posture. You've been saying it and didn't even realize you were saying it. See, I want y'all to start thinking of every colloquialism that you use. You say stuff like, hey, when I met so-and-so, so-and-so, they took me. <laughs> you preaching to yourself and don't even realize it. They took me. The snake walked upright before the devil used them. 
Once the devil enter his body, he now slithers. What happens? The snake don't bother Adam when he by himself. The snake don't bother Adam when he's alone. But the moment Adam got a partner, the enemy showed up. Because the devil ain't after just you. He's trying to kill the stuff and the people that help you be you. That's why y'all need to tell a couple of people, you better be careful trying to be my friend because some of the hell you're going to catch ain't got nothing to do with you. The devil just hell bent on stopping me. So he realized if you help me, he may attack. Y'all don't like me today. It's the power of partnership. The enemy, can you put this in your phone? Put this in your notes. Somebody put this in the chat for me if you don't mind. In overflow, I need y'all to write this for me. The enemy does not fear you having relationships. He is worried about you having strong relationships. <laughs> the enemy does not fear you having relationships. But he does not want you having strong relationships oh my god oh my god have you ever thought about the folk who don't help you and you don't even care for y'all never fall out <laughs> but the folk who actually love you and the people you actually love it's like y'all bump heads every six months what if it ain't neither one of y'all what if the devil on this side like you gonna let her say that then he on this side saying, hey, act like you really don't need you. Because he realized, I don't mind you having casual relationships. I can't ever let you build a strong relate. I'm preaching if you're a Why, PMJ, I need this no matter. Please put this in your notes. Are y'all with me? No matter what advantages you have, you will always be tested in an area that you cannot fix by yourself. Did y'all hear what I just said? I don't care what type of advantages you have. You will always be tested in an area that you cannot fix by yourself. Some of y'all got 99 problems and money ain't one. The devil ain't going to attack you in money. He know you could buy it. That's why your relationship's so raggedy. Some of y'all got strong relationships. He's not going to attack your relationships. He always attacks you and your money. His goal is to always attack you in an area that you can't fix yourself. The problem is you are so wounded and still in your feelings and never healed from some of your past betrayal and hurt that he realizes since I'm attacking you in an area that you can't fix yourself, you're going to be too prideful to ask for help. Y'all don't like me today. There's somebody watching me right now in this room and online, and you're in a season of your life where you need some help, but pride got you. Yeah, everything in you want to say, somebody pray for me. But you're so worried about who's going to be in your business that you can't even ask for help. Right now, you one friend away from helping you cover this or cover that, but you won't even spend or ask them what you need. Why, Pastor Mike? Because you're so in your pride. You're trying to figure out, I don't want nobody to think I'm weak. I don't want nobody to think I'm out here broke. I don't want nobody to think we got problems. Now, shut up. Don't tell nobody my business. I'm going to be the first one to say this publicly. If there's something wrong with me, you can think I'm weak all you want to. I'm finna start telling people certain things that I'm going through because how else am I going to know if you the right one unless I give you an opportunity to try to beat And I'm discovering you need some people in your life. Uh-oh, because it's one thing to be surrounded. It's another thing to be supported. I don't think you heard what I just said. It's one thing to be surrounded. It's another thing to be supported. This is how people can be crowded with people around them but still feel lonely. This is how you can have a whole circle of people and still feel like won't nobody help you. Because being surrounded gives you company. Being supported helps your calling. And the question I want to ask three of y'all today is are you surrounded? Or are you supported? Because there are two types of people. People who surround you will look at you. People who support you will help you lift it. 
Oh, put that in your notes. There are two types of people. You got lookers and you got lifters. Michael, you got lifters and you got lookers. Now, lookers will watch you, but lifters don't mind getting in the mud and helping you carry your vision. I'm preaching, I'm preaching if you receive this. We had groceries come to the house yesterday. I got some Uber groceries, however you do it. They came, left all of it on the front porch. I see them coming, boom, once they pull off, I open the front door and it's groceries all over the porch and I start bringing them in. I'm walking in the den to the kitchen and the boys watch me walk, then I go back, then it hit me on my third trip. They ain't got up yet. So I'm sitting at the door trying to figure out do I yell at them for not helping me? Or am I more disappointed that they saw me carrying something and nothing in them wanted to get up? I went in the den and said, now y'all didn't see me carrying them groceries. They made two statements that I feel your circle keep making to you. They said, one, we thought that was it all. We didn't think it was no more. We thought that was it. I said, I done went three times. Why y'all just didn't ask? Then they said, dad, we thought you had it. Everybody can't shout over this. This only for the three strong people who want to yell to the top of your lungs. Yes, I got it, but how long am I going to have to have it by myself? I'm not built like that. I'm not built to complain and murmur. If don't none of y'all help me, I'll get it myself. But for once, would somebody just help me? I think you sat next to a hater and don't realize it. So reach over that hater and high five a real neighbor and tell them, just send me some help. I'll pay every bill I got by myself. But for once, let somebody just look out for me. I pray for everybody. For once, let somebody pray for me. Just look down your row and say, you ain't got a shout right here. I brought enough praise for everybody on my row. You ought to shout, help is on Away. That blessed me. Forget y'all. I'm preaching to y'all. I think I just preached myself happy right there. This is for the strong people in the room who, truth be told, you are tired and you have perfected masking like you good. They don't realize the strength it took for you to carry it. They don't even realize how strong you gotta be to put this fake smile on your face. And folk be hitting you up. Hey, if you need some, just let me know. But the way you built, now I'm good, man. You know I got it, y'all. Thank y'all for asking. But in your heart, you like, you know I need help. Why should I have to ask you for help? But I speak by faith. God sending me some people who before I ask, hey, I'm on the way to help you right now. What you need? Help is on the way. Help is on the way. I feel Baptist this morning. Help is on the way. And you got to be careful because this is a public service announcement. You've been in my life now long enough to know when I need some help. When new people show up and they start helping me without me asking. You bet not text or call me saying why you invited them. They invited they self when they had enough sense to step into my situation. Power of partnership. And in our text today, we see the beauty of what can happen when we go beyond attendance and we practice agreement. Because just because you're surrounded don't mean you support it. And everybody in attendance ain't always in agreement. Michael, I be preaching. Everybody in attendance ain't in agreement. I, everybody with a big dream, throw your hand up, hands up in the comments, there it is. Everybody with a big dream and a big team, throw your hand up. There it is right there. Everybody with a big dream and a small team, throw your hand up. Booyah, there it is right there. Everybody with a big dream and you not really sure if everybody in agreement, throw your hand up, okay? You gonna have to have staff meeting. 
Yeah, I want everybody listening to me this week to create a free Zoom link, right? I want you to create a free Zoom link and put it in your group text thread and say, hey, y'all, at 8 o'clock, click this link. When they click the link, I want you to have on a whole business suit and an agenda. I want you to be, hey, how y'all doing? I want to call this meeting to order. And they're going to be laughing and joking. What are you talking about? Hey, cut, cut, cut your camera on, sit up right. I want to call this meeting to order. Now, I'm believing God for some big stuff in 2024. My business going to do this. My kids going to do this. Baby girl need a scholarship, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to go down the list of what I'm believing God for. I need everybody in the room to tell me if they agree. Now, they're going to be on the phone joking, but I want you to be careful. Because what I discovered is every joke got a level of truth to it. <laughs> All right, y'all, we getting some money this year. We're going to be debt free, and I'm about my <laughs> girl, you crazy. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and move, remove her from the Zoom real quick. What I do, I ain't said nothing, but you was crazy. You didn't praise with me. Your joke had a level of insecurity in it, and I ain't got room for no doubt in my circle. I want my circle to be like, yeah, we paying off the house this year. Me too. Kids getting saved this year. Me too. All right. I'm going to have to find me another church that got some agreement with me. Cause some of y'all shouting, some of y'all looking at me like you're crazy. Some of y'all got degrees, so you're trying to make this make sense methodologically. No, I got the type of faith, it don't have to make sense to me. I just need you to, t I want a type of circle that I can be like, yeah, I just decided I'm opening another campus. Okay, pastor, let's do it, yeah. Uh, Rock City, Mars, Elon Musk said we're going to Mars, so I want to be the first pastor on Mars. I don't need nobody in my life. Like, you done lost your mind. They didn't think cars would be electric 20 years ago. As I'm talking to you right now, somebody can pull out their phone, turn their air on and their heat on from home, cut their alarm on from home. So you mean to tell me if they have faith for what you got now, you ain't got no faith for what God can do later. Put script on and my God is able to do exceeding, abundant. Y'all don't hear me? It's already done. And when we tiptoe, woo, when we, I got a pusa. When, when, when we tiptoe into the chronicles of today's text, we find ourselves situated and acculturated in the book of Acts. Most scholars call Acts second Luke. When I was at Yale Divinity, that blew me away. My professor said Acts, which is short for Acts of the Holy Spirit. But it is also considered to some scholars because Luke is the author, the second Luke. Second Luke is critical. When we approach this uh, Acts text, we see in verse 8, a Lystra man. I'm finna run. I'm trying to be dignified. To all my visitors, I want to apologize from the beginning. We are a dignified, very professional. No, we not. We crazy. I just thought about that. I was in the line church. We, we crazy. Something been going on at our church for the last two months where everybody just been crazy. So we just want to warn you real quickly. You may hear a random holler, random scream. I may take out running. Ain't nothing wrong with us. We just got a sneak peek of what God's going to do for us. When we get to the book of Acts, get it together, Mike. When we get to the book of Acts, Paul and Barnabas, please put that in your notes. Paul and Barnabas, we see the power of partnership. That's critical. Candace, that's critical because I like Paul because Paul had issues. Paul is going from city to city. I'm sorry. At this point, his name is Saul. Saul is going from city to city killing Christians. He gets saved. God changes his name to Paul. And from the moment he is converted, he finds partnership. Paul, Barnabas, and at midnight, Paul, Silas, Paul, Timothy. Y'all miss y'all shot right there and don't even hear me. That's why you got to find the right partner. Because if one can put a, then two can put. What would happen if you actually got a good? Yeah. 
Yeah, so when we see Paul, Paul understood partnership. He understood partnership. And when we see Paul and Barnabas, they are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and God is moving. They, account, they encounter a man who is lame. Now, he's lame. All of my young people uh, who grew up in school and they were saying people were lame, that's a colloquialism, but it is also biblical. Biblically lame meant he couldn't walk, all right? He couldn't walk. I need you to catch this now. Look at Acts 14 and 8. At Lystra, let's break this scripture down. Lystra is the city that they're in. At Lystra, that's the city. A man, what's his name? It don't matter. <laughs> At Lystra, a man was sitting who had no strength, Michael, in his feet, lame from his mother's womb, who had never walked. I, I, I want me an old school church. I'm trying my best to be y'all pastor. I be trying to preach and make y'all happy and give you a good word and make sure you growing. I'm telling y'all, right, I'm going to give y'all six more weeks to get on my level. Oh, y'all going to see me at First Baptist somewhere. I'm going to wear a suit every Sunday. Because if I was at Granddaddy Church, I don't even have to work this hard. They'd be saying, yes, sir. When you read, I could have literally said, at Lystra, a man was sitting who had no strength in his feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Had no strength in his feet. He was lame from his mother's womb. And, uh, and, uh, and not only was he lame from his mother's womb, he had never walked. And see, Grandmama Church got excited because as the preacher was preaching, they was doing the math in their head. Because look at this, unlike when Paul healed Aeneas in chapter 9, or the lame man at the gate called Beautiful in chapter 3, we are currently situated in chapter 14. In chapter 3, he heals a man who can't walk at the gate called Beautiful. In chapter 9, he heals Aeneas. The author in this particular text gives us a detailed description of this brother's issue. His feet don't work. <sighs> he says, no, lame from his mother's womb. He had never walked. Here it is. And his feet had no strength in it. If his feet don't work, I want you to think critically and think deeply. Please put this in your notes. No strength in feet equal no foundation. Michael, no strength in his feet really equals no foundation. Notice the text don't say he got leg problems. His legs work fine. Thighs are strong. Calves are strong. Spine strong his feet don't work <laughs> which means he has no foundation pastor mike i don't get it no his legs work properly yep nice and strong his calves are intact his back he's sitting upright his his spine is where it needs to be his only issue is michael his feet don't work and what does my feet don't work mean that means no matter how strong his legs are, how strong his spine is, every time they stand him up, he fall back down. Woo! Every time, TT, every time they stand him up. So why, I don't know who brought him here. Come on, we got you. We got you. Come on, right here. There you go. There you go. Come on. There you go. There you go. And he's sitting. Legs strong. Spine strong, we got you. But his feet don't work. Which means no matter how many times, wait, 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 I get him up, he ain't strong enough to stay up. Which is why some of y'all exhausted with your circle because you spend half of your year doing this. Then the moment you want something for yourself, they blame you because they keep falling. His feet don't work. And many of y'all looking at me like that's a shame. No. What if I told you your feet don't work either? <laughs> no, your feet don't work 
when you know all the church songs but don't know no scripture. So you know the lyrics to every Pastor Mike song, every Maverick song, every Kurt song, but when hell jump off, demons don't flee at lyrics. They flee when you got scripture based upon the word of God. You know all the church cliches, but you ain't got no prayer life. God is good. And all the time, when praises go up, but you don't have a prayer life. So if I asked you to do that, you didn't even have to think about it. But if I handed you the microphone to pray right now, you get instantly nervous because your feet don't. Yeah, you got Dolce, you got Gabbana. You look real cute sitting here, look at you. Looking like you look, you put that on. Oh, you got it on today, don't you? You put it on today, then you look at you. Waves intact, J's fresh, hair lay, your little skirt situation look nice. You went with the whole blazer, jeans set up, got that thing working, look in the mirror before you left, and was like, oh, I'm gonna kill him today. And the devil like, yeah, you can put on everything but the whole armor of God. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't think I like this sermon no more. I feel like he attacking me. You don't mind putting the offering in, but you never tithe. That's why the devil can walk in and just knock you over, because your feet don't work. But I came to speak by faith. This year, I'm getting some foundation in my life. I'm done playing church and getting cute messages and getting a feel-good message. Give me a word that causes me to examine myself so I can be what God called me to be. Yeah. Look at him, look at him, over there, by himself. Scripture don't tell me who brought him. And that's why my frustration sometimes is with the word, because in one story they told me there were four men who brought a paralytic brother to Jesus. I don't know who brought him. The text don't tell me. My pastor taught me when the text is quiet, you should be quiet too but I can't help it. My imagination run wild. I, I don't know what to do. I, I'm being honest with you. Did somebody carry him? I, is that what happened? Did somebody carry him? And then they just set him right here? Because if you look at the Bible, uh-oh, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. There is no mention of a synagogue in Lystra. That's a deep statement and you missed it. In the Bible, up until now, there is no mention of a synagogue in Lystra. Pastor Mike, please modernize, contemporize, or McClurize that text. Here's what it means right here. Ain't no church. So Paul ain't in church. And he's in church preaching and see a man who need it. This is what scholars call open air preaching. I'm finna run. Oh, in other words, this is when you're crazy enough to say, I don't need a church. I don't need a pulpit if I got to go stand on the corner and preach. See, this is why you got to be careful when y'all be laughing at people holding up signs on the side of the road. Don't let 21st century Christendom and don't let society make you believe that just because they don't have a mega building, they ain't got a mega word. Your anointing ain't predicated on how many seats you got. Your anointed is predicated at who feet you sit. Michael! And look at what he says. He's preaching. And this is critical. He's preaching, right? He's preaching. He's preaching. And Paul is preaching. So imagine we outside, right? And it's me. Hey, so I want you to know that Jesus died just for you. That you don't have to be perfect. You, you don't... You, because the scripture is right there on the screen. says, this man, oh, Jesus was listening to Paul as he spoke, who had been fixed, gaze on him, and had seen, now, now, now this is critical, so Paul trying to preach, and Paul like, okay y'all, uh, and, and Jesus, it's Jesus. Have you ever been in a conversation with them? Then all of a sudden you catch them all in your conversation, and you wanted to say this is an A and B, conversation so I need you to see your way out of it but that's when you're talking about gossip when it comes to the gospel because there's a difference between gossip and the gospel 
The gossip is something you sip on that tickles your flesh. The gospel is something you feed on that breaks your flesh. Michael! And he's sitting there and he's looking. He's like, hey, put scripture on it. So then, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, NLT. So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Uh-oh, message version. The point is, before you trust, you have to listen. But unless Christ's word is preached, there's nothing to listen to. You're not going to say, hey man, it's cool in the game. I ain't scared of y'all. It is what it is. I'm at this point in my life. It's just some conversations I don't want in my spirit. Yeah, I ain't getting no claps right there. Yeah, I was on a call this week with one of my friends and they may see this message and probably gonna text me this week and be like, you have to put me in the message. I'll leave them nameless. But we on the call, there's probably four of us and the conversation took a turn left. Next thing I know, they texting me, did your call drop? I said, no, I dropped it. They hit me. Don't go being all super spiritual now. I said, I'm not being super spiritual. The way my anxiety set up, the way my feelings set up, if certain conversations get in my spirit, I'm not a professional messy person like you. I can't shake it loose. I'm one of the ones who will put all up on the phone and try to figure out who said what. I'm, God bless you, don't talk around me. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, so-and-so told me that you said so-and-so, and I ain't got time to be figuring out, do we got a problem? It's just certain stuff I don't want in my spirit. Mm-mm. 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 That's how I want you all year. I want you on the phone. Ring. What up? What you up to? Nothing, man. Over here chilling. Oh, okay. Everything going good your way. I ain't got no complaints. You know, it is what it is, but God got me. Yeah, yeah. You heard about something? Mm-mm. 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 What? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. What? Mm-mm. I don't want none of that in my spirit. I ain't trying to put none of you all on set. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Why? What's wrong with you? Because if you'll talk about their stuff with me, you'll talk about my stuff with them. Oh, so you acting funny? Hold on real quick. I just want you to put them on hold and just walk away. Why, Pastor Mike? I got to guard my spirit. I'm believing God for too much, praying for too much, trying to grind too hard to be in conversation that's going to keep me going. Yes. He's listening to Paul, right? He's listening to Paul. And this man was listening to Paul as he spoke. He had fixed his gaze upon him and seen that his faith would make him whole. And it's critical right here because this man looking at Paul intently. The guy he's looking. And Paul's trying to preach. But he can't take his eyes off him. And I want y'all to know that God's, God's getting, I want y'all to know that God's getting ready. And I bet, I bet Barnabas looking at Paul like, what? Because like, I got people on staff who do that with me. If I start looking weird while I'm preaching, they be trying to figure out, like, is he uncomfortable? Is something wrong? Did somebody just walk in? Like, because we sit and they be like, is, is everything all right? And they, imagine I'm over here preaching, right? Imagine, like, and this is your year. And God, God says he's going to bless you with... Because the scripture says he gazed on him. He's listening... Paul is gazing, and the way his spirit is locked in, oh my God, you can almost see. He didn't verbally request nothing, but his spirit demanded it. No, look at him. 
And, if, and Paul ain't here, but I bet if Paul was here, I would call Paul and say, Paul, what's the deal with old boy in Acts chapter 14? And Paul would be like, P, this is crazy. Like, I'm, I'm up there preaching, doing my thing, the spirit moving, people getting saved. And, and, and it's weird because, you know, in church, people emotional, right? He says, so I got one side of the room shouting hallelujah. I'm like, word. He's like, I got another side saying thank you, Jesus. I'm like, all right. He said, I got a sister take out running and shout. I got men with their hands lifted. But he was just looking at me. I, I said, so did you think you weren't preaching good? He said, I had to figure it out, which is why I gazed. Gaze is a euphemism or metaphor for discerned. I had to look through him. How do I know he looked through him? Because the scripture said he seen that he had faith to be made well. He saw past his issue and just looked through his heart. Some of y'all could save yourself six months of heartache if you would gaze long enough. Y'all don't like me today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if you went on your next date and didn't order nothing? You just got to the table and said, can I get some water real quick? Thank you so much. All right, check please, thank you. What you looking at? I'm gazing. No, because you look like what I want. You talk like what I want. The way I'm set up in my head, I done already worked some stuff out, already mapped out what stuff can look like, because when I love, I love fast and I love hard. So before I jump, let me see if your spirit agree with me. Am I preaching to anybody? Look at me. He right here. I gotta get you out of here. You look at him. After a while, Paul can't take it. I like the way the Bible's set up. I, would, I pray one day if I ever get six to seven months to just clear my schedule and do nothing, I want to read the whole Bible in my voice with my come. I would love to do that because it would be like a movie. Because in my movie, Paul is up preaching. God's here. He's getting, I, I, I need some good preaching. God says he's finna move. Cinematic trailer. Take me on a trailer move. All right. So boom, Paul is up preaching. Jesus is coming back. I came to save everybody who's lost all you got to do is repent repent then the scripture lastly get ahead of me says with a loud voice stand upright on your feet you missed it you missed it you caught that. You, me and you are the only ones who caught that. I'm going to say it again. He tells him with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. Sit down. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Can I play devil's advocate? Why did he say it loud? Why did the author make sure to let us know the tonality he used why didn't it say he said up on your feet this writer says he said with a loud voice that gives me two dis two options either he wanted to speak it with authority or he had to speak it because of distance what if he preaching over here but he listening over there so Paul says, I want to be very clear that he don't miss this moment. Stand up right on your feet. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Some of y'all missing your breakthrough word because you're talking about you don't like how they said it to you. Every now and then when God's trying to get a word to you, they ain't got time to look at you and say, hey, how you doing? I know you've been through a lot and I know people walked out of your life. But this is your moment. I ain't got time for all that. Stand up! I came to speak to somebody who money been down. Get up! 
your peace been down. Get up! I need you to shake three people and shout, get up! Yep. Yep. Tell your neighbor you should have never sat next to me. I got enough anointing for everybody connected to me. I just need you to shake two or three people and tell them this is your year to get up. Your peace getting up. Your joy getting up. Your favor getting up. Your creativity getting up. Shake somebody and tell them get up. Look at him. Paul looks at him. Paul says, stand upright. Watch this. On your feet. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Get back down. Y'all missed it. I told you his feet. Bro, do they be hearing me? They feet. His feet don't work. Paul so cold. That Paul says, hmm, I want you to stand on what ain't never worked. Y'all don't hear me today. Or oh, in other words, you better not run. Get ready to do what you never done. Can I prophesy to a thousand folk and shout in 2024, you gonna do what you never done. You are the shot. You want it? You can't have it. You want it? You can't have it. I'm about to do what I've never done. I'm about to do what I've never done. I'm about to do what I've never done. About to do what I've never done. Hey, hey. He looks at him. He says, Watch this. His feet don't work. He tells him, I need y'all to catch this now, to stand up. What does he tell this man? Stand up. What does he tell this man? What does he tell this man? All right, can you put my scripture on the screen? There it is. He says, Stand upright. On your feet. Y'all slow, but you're worth waiting on. What is he doing? Now, now y'all gonna, it's too, I don't know why you're gonna shout. Either you're gonna shout that he leaped, or you're gonna shout that he walked. If your leg, if your feet ain't never worked, he should have got up. But when God give you favor, you don't go from sitting to balancing. You go from walking. I wish I had somebody crazy to just walk right where you at. Like I'm getting ready to do what I never. How you saying? How you saying? He says, says, on your feet. And look what he does, he leaps up and he starts walking. Now here's the problem, people start praising Paul. Look at this, they start telling Paul, oh you a God. And Paul tells them, watch what he says, friends, why are y'all doing this? We are just human. Y'all gotta hear me. Paul says, no, 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 don't give me no credit. Please don't put me on no pedestal. No, I don't want people coming to my church like I came to see Pastor Mike. Don't come see me. I might let you down. You got to come see Jesus. No, no, we're not doing that. That's why when you pull up to the church, what the signs say? Rock City Church. You don't see my name under it, Pastor Michael. Didn't know, because this is his church. We are his children. I am not the draw. I'm just the lifter. He said, if I win, I be lifted. Look at this. And Paul says, yo, yo, yo. No, 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 no. I'm just here to preach. And some of y'all keep missing your breakthrough because God want to know, can I give you a promotion? But then you give me the glory. Y'all don't like me today. Y'all don't like me today. 
No, they get so mad with Paul that the scripture says some Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium and they stoned Paul. They say, Paul, you think you all that? You want to save people? Get out here. Mm -hmm. Get out here. Stand right there. And what do they do? They pick up rocks and stones. Boom. Come here, Quran. Boom. You be Barnabas. Boom. And they stone Paul. Okay? All right. I got to show you something. Paul has a partner called who? Okay. Who's his partner? Who's his partner? I'm going to read the scripture. Can you put the scripture on the screen? Verse 19. Then some Jews from Antioch and Iconium won the crowd to their side. They stoned Paul. Wait. Wait. Is Paul by himself? Who with Paul? Who gets stoned? Some of your frustration with your circle is that they don't get that both of y'all get to see it. You just the one who get whooped for it. Y'all, y'all missed that right there. No! That's why I tell my team sometimes, be careful what y'all put out. Be careful what you do. If you're going to go somewhere, be careful when y'all go place. Come on, y'all, because they're not going to say you messed up. You know what they're going to say? Pastor Mike in that church was never what I, and I'm going to get stoned. And look at what happens. They said, no, nah, we want Paul. You ain't a threat. Get out of here. You just stand over there. No, you come here, Paul, and they stone him. Boom. Throw rock on him. Boom. Stone it. Boom. Boom. They would literally hit you with rocks until you died. Boom. Hit him. Boom. But here's what I think happened. This is going to bless me. He ain't just sitting there doing nothing. In my head, he like, come come, Corey, come here. Corey. He might come here. He might come here. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Brother Melvin. Oh my God. Hey, take it. They stoned him. It's cool though. It's cool though. We're not going to get. Y'all come over here. We can't. We got to be careful. We got to be careful. We got to be. Got it. Got it. Can you help us? Okay. We got to be. We got to be careful. Hey, hey, hey. He's. He, he, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Come on. Come on. Come on. And they, they frustrated. <laughs> Paul, all you doing for people? And they out here treating us like we ain't nobody. Man, I'm telling you, bro. It's like Paul don't even bother nobody. We ought to, y'all don't want to take off on them. We can take off on them right now. We can tell, I'm telling you, man, like right now. It's self moss, man. It's, I'm just so tired how they always treating people. They got the right one. And the circle not encouraging him for foolishness. The scripture says they stoned Paul. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Dragged him. Okay, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Because the scripture says the believers, come here, gathered around him. Y'all gotta keep up. The believers gathered around him. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all gotta keep up in the back quickly. The believers, y'all missed it. I need y'all back over here. He gets stoned in the city. The believers find his body. Watch this. How do they find his body? All they had to do was follow the blood. And the devil thought he was hurting you by wounding you. He had no idea he was helping the people find you. Look at this. I gotta go. And the scripture says, I'm finna run. And the believers, Michael, gathered around him. Put it on the screen. The believers gathered around him and started praying. Right now in the name of Jesus. God, this is not the end. God, it is not over. God, we believe that you can do it again. We believe that he's not dead. This is why you need a good circle. That they won't leave you down. But they'll begin to speak life over you. I need you to grab your neighbor's hand and just speak life over your neighbor. Say you are the head, not the tail, the lender, not the borrower. Above only, not beneath. 
You don't know who on the internet or who in the room down. I wish I had a prayer warrior somewhere that'd just cover everybody in this room and online. Yes, God. Look at this. Look at this. Ooh, I feel God. I feel God in here. Hear me. Hear me. Ooh, I feel, I feel, I feel. Hear me. Don't leave me hanging. This is what's crazy. I need you to catch this. This is what's crazy. This is what's crazy. Had Paul had worldly friends, when they saw him bleeding out, they would have started planning a funeral. See, your circle sometimes determine if you get up. And don't feel bad for them. Stop judging your circle saying they ain't got faith. No, sometimes they're reacting off of what they've always seen. Look, look at this, look at this, look at this. I want y'all to finish this. I want y'all to use common sense because I want you to treat your circle better and give some of them grace, but then some of them you're going to have to cut off. But I, but I want you to hear me. I want you to answer this deductively. If you don't pay your bills, that thing gets what? Right? That's common sense, right? It gets cut off, right? All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, if you jump off the top of a skyscraper, eventually you will be unalive, right? If you put no gas in your car, eventually it will what? Because that's what life has what? Taught you. So if you've seen people be stoned and all of them die, when you get there, you assume Paul is going to what? But when favor is on your life, God makes an exception. You ought to just shout, I'm not different from you, but I am an exception. I'm not saying I'm better than you. But I am an exception. People don't come from where I come from and make it the way I make it. I am the exception. No, the rule states if you come from nothing, you end up with nothing. But in your life, God made an exception. The rule says if you get this sickness, you die. But I speak life over my body. I am the exception. The rule said I should have 20 years worth of experience. But I claim the job is already mine. I am the exception. The crowd stoned him. Watch this. His crew prayed for him. I want to ask you a question. What if you can't overcome because your life is too overcrowded? Is that not all right? Bro, I love people. I don't like being by myself. That's the truth. I joke I had so many kids so I could just birth my friends. Especially now that they 17, 16, and 14, we be on the game, 2K, college football, Madden. You come downstairs, you think it's five little boys down there. We throwing the ball, I got holes in the wall, because yesterday we decided to get some empty drink cans and shoot the BB gun in the house. So we on the other end of the couch acting like we in World War Four. Just shooting at the BB can. I get done looking the whole, my whole wall. I'm like, oh my God, you get killed. Eli. They're my boys. When I say my boy, like they're my friend. Like, hear me, I'm still daddy. But they, when I want to watch the game, hey, what y'all doing? I like that. I like that. I like company. But I had to realize company ain't always good for my calling. Crowd versus crew. Crowd, if you want to put this in your phone, crowd is quality. I'm sorry. Crowd is quantity. A crew is quality. I got to have quality around me. 
bro, I, I, I need it. I need, I need quality around me. My little crew I got around me, we're going to laugh together, cry together, pray together, win together, lose together. When the dust settle, if I ever get stoned, they're going to put that circle around me. And if I don't get up, they're going to carry me to my resting place. And after I'm in my resting place, they're going to make sure my legacy intact. See, that's what a crew do. Crowds come for the two fish, five loaves. And many of you are trying to accomplish great things with the wrong crew. And look at this. They start hating Paul. This is what one scholar calls. I need you to put this in your notes. Please put this in your notes. Common enemy intimacy. Please put that in your notes. It's called common enemy intimacy. Common enemy intimacy is a cheap form of connection where two or more people bond over what they hate instead of what they love. Common enemy intimacy is when they don't even like each other, but they like each other long enough to not like you. They are now bonding over the fact that they got a common enemy. You want to know what's crazy? And once they still can't defeat you, they finally end up realizing they don't even like each other. That's why I need you to focus. Because there are some people who are in secret competition with you. You don't even know it. And they still lose it. Look at this. The crowd knocked him down. But the crew picked him up. I need you to understand this. That after they stoned him, look at this. They circled him. He got up. Look at this. And he went right back into the town. Thank y'all. Look at this. Can I free you? I'm finna send you home. Stand with me all over the room. I'm finna send you home. I want to ask you a simple question. I grew up, I went to Central Park Elementary, right? It was this dude named Rodriguez who used to beat everybody up, right? Rodriguez, he could throw hands. He was really good at throwing hands, all right? And so fifth grade, I couldn't take it no more. We at the water fountain in Miss Cannon class, and I couldn't take it. And, and he just kept bothering me, kept bothering me. We had pulled up this day in a church van. We didn't have a car. So, you know, you pull up to school in a church van. I get out the church van, everybody, oh, he ride a church van, oh. And so I'm hiding, this true story, I'm hiding behind a tree, and I'm embarrassed, I'm crying. Oh, he crying. So then we get to class, he just wouldn't stop, all right? But everybody knew, don't, you don't play with Rodriguez. He got hands. He got hands, hands, right? I couldn't take it. Oh, my God, I couldn't take it. I couldn't, hear me when I say I couldn't take it. Rodriguez, and then it was another dude from Central Park, his name was Scoop, right? So Scoop hyped me up. He over there literally, he was like, oh, you just gonna let him say that to you, Mike, Mike? I got you, I got, now Scoop was, Scoop was Scoop now. Like, it, nobody bothered Scoop, but Scoop constantly telling me, no, you gonna let him do that to you? I got you, all you gotta do is swing, I got you, I got you. Now looking back retrospectively, Scoop was just hyping me up, all right? So I'm in that joint, and I'm, in, I'm probably eight people back at the water fountain, and it's fuming. It's fuming. I get to the water fountain. You know how you turn a little knob to get some water, but you have to do it light? He walked up, boom, turns the water go in my face. Ah! Whoosh! I rear back. It was the loudest slap you ever heard. Fire! Everybody paused. All right? So in my heart, I'm like, yeah. It's like, so then all of a sudden I look this way. Then it's like, hey, what's going on? Then I, like, then I bounce. Then it's like, I just like, Pff. I'm just getting stumped out at the warden fountain. Right? So then my cousin come running down the hall. He tackle him. Boom. So I get up and I start swinging a little bit. Then they break it up. Everybody like, Mike fought back. Mike fought back. Then I never get Rodriguez said something that blessed me. I'ma see you after school. It was over to me. Like I didn't want part two. Like to me, I wanted a good. Uh, it's over. Let's be friends. That ain't what we supposed to do. We supposed to be tight after this. He made it very clear. What the principal T said? I'ma see you after school. It's home after school. Oh 
my God, 255 rolled around. I'm looking at the clock. Three o'clock, that bell rung. God rest us on Miss Cannon said, come in, Michael. I said, yes, ma'am. Said, you class president. I said, yes, ma'am. I know he was messing with you. I said, yes, ma'am. They waiting on you outside, ain't it? <laughs> I snitched. I said, yes, ma'am. They all out there. Everybody. She's like, come on. She said, I want you to go down that hall right there. Go down them steps. That's going to take you out on the other side of the building. You just going to go home. All right? I'm walking out this door, and in my heart, I'm like, I ain't no punk. I ain't built like that. But I'm going to take this exit because I don't want to do nothing to him. Hear me. That weekend went by. We got to school that Monday. It's like, you know, over the weekend, you forget about it. That story makes me think about Paul. How you get stoned, dragged out of city, get up. Common sense says you might need to go to another city. But Paul knew something I wish we would understand. To be afflicted for the Christ is the greatest honor you can have. That's why Paul later goes on to say, from now on, when people dogging Paul out, Paul goes on to say, from now on, don't trouble me with none of the mess they're saying. For I bear on my body the scars that prove I've been with Jesus. And I wonder what you could accomplish if your circle didn't leave you hanging. Father, I speak good teams over their life. God, they don't need 50 friends. I speak three good ones. Two good family members, God. Somebody that when life knocks them down, they can put a circle around them and pray, God. Cover, keep, bless, and protect them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now just for being God. I lift up every man right now, God. I speak by faith. You will equip us to have every spiritual gifting, every fruit of the spirit we need to accomplish this thing called life. I lift up every woman in this room, God, so she'll be able to stay, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of Christ. God, I lift up our families. Put one of them in a position to be what we need. God, cover our circles, cover our friends. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise that we don't find out if we're faithful in times of good times. But God, behind every no, every attack, every hard place, our answer will forever be yes. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, come on, clap your hands right there. Come on, clap your hands. Look at somebody close to you, tell them, I'm not going to leave you down. I'm not going to leave you down. Listen to me, before you leave, if you don't mind, can you just take somebody by the hand? You never know who needs Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is still the best thing I've ever done. So if you grab somebody's hand, I know you're finna leave. I speak by faith. Here we go. Maybe you don't, you don't have a church home and you're looking for a church home. Just squeeze your neighbor's hand. It's real simple. Pastor Mike, I like coming to this church. I really feel like God's calling me to this church. Just squeeze your neighbor's hand. Maybe you've never given life, Jesus, your heart. Maybe never given life, God, your heart. I'm telling you, man, there's a lot of religions you could be a part of. So many of them have great discipline. So many of them uh, have what they believe. As for how I believe, I believe that Jesus was not just a prophet, that he was not just Mary's son, that he is God. And he went to the hell and took back the keys and got up with all power in his hand. And falling in love with Jesus and giving my life to Jesus for me is the best thing that has ever happened to me. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you can just squeeze your neighbor's hand. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Maybe you've been saved a long time, but you've just been slipping. And part of you feels like I just need to give my life to Christ. I need to rededicate my life to Christ. I'm the pastor of the church and four years ago I got baptized again. Because there was a lot I felt like I just wanted a fresh start. Maybe that's you, man. Just squeeze your neighbor's hand. If you have somebody squeeze your hand, just lift that hand up right there. And just repeat after me. Say, Lord, 
come into my heart. I confess with my mouth. I believe with my heart that you were raised from the dead with all power in your hands. And right now, by faith, I am saved. Give God praise right there, man. Hallelujah. I love you. I'm praying for you. If you made a decision today, uh, you don't have to come up in front of everybody. You can simply text home to 28950, and we would love to call you this week and pray with you. If you're giving today, I'm a tither. I put God first. I really believe in honoring God from all that God gives me. I tithe, I text, I rock with the amount I wish to give to 28950. I'm going to say this. I've been living 40 years now. You just can't be God's giving no matter how hard you try. I'm so proud of this church and all that we're able to do. Uh, if I have any parents, any parent in the room have a senior who's in a hot Birmingham school system, anybody got a high school senior who's in a Birmingham school system, do me a favor, please. After church, make sure you contact us. Our church is paying tuition for five freshmen uh, who stay in-state, go to college, and are part of the Birmingham city school system. I'm excited about that. We're sending people to school, man. That's what's important. <laughs> so I love you so much. Were you blessed today? Yeah. Amen. To our family who came all the way from UK, we love you guys, man. We pray y'all enjoy it. Get y'all something good to eat while y'all here, man. We love you. God, I pray a simple prayer. Your will. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. I love y'all. I'll see y'all Sunday. We... Wait, wait, one second. Do me this favor. Next Sunday, we're taking communion. We're taking communion, and I'm doing baby dedications. I never ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you to do this this week. Put on some church clothes Sunday. I want you to put on your black suit, fella. Put on a little suit or some. Ladies, put a, get, oh, come on now. We're going to go to church Sunday. We're going to take communion. Who don't mind putting on some church clothes one Sunday out the year? I want a hat. If you got a hat, put your hat on. In Jesus' name. I love y'all so much. I'll see y'all Sunday. We are! Yes, wow, we are Rock City. And what an I'm still ranked. I'm ranked right lesson. now. Yeah. I, I was, so I'm going to tell you this. You know, of course, the message was absolutely incredible. But when he talked about the difference between being supported and surrounded. Yes, God. You know, and then about, uh, you know, attendance and agreement. I just, like, God, I need some people like you that I know will pray for me. Amen. Not just, I remember one week he talked about, you know, they'll party with you, but they won't yeah. pray with you. Yeah. And I think it's so good to see this this message. If it blessed you, go ahead and put a fire sign emoji. Yes, uh, put a, uh, uh, the bicep up for a strong word. If it really blessed you the way it blessed me. Absolutely. And we know that it blessed hundreds of people. Yeah. Not sure if you all can see, but so many people raised their hands yes. in terms of telling God yes uh, or rededicating their life. So maybe you are watching online. Maybe you're in overflow right now. Listen, what better time to come home wow. than right now? right now? And so if you're watching, you can text home to 28950. Yeah. We want to be able to connect with you get you plugged into P2P, which is now happening weekly on Wednesday. Yes. And so if you're also interested in P2P text, and that's Pathway to Purpose, yeah. text P2P to 28950. Absolutely. We, we look forward to you getting involved. Now, you're saying, you know, you saw how Pastor Mike was just talking about how we're going to be sending, Roxy's going to be sending some kids to, right. to college. Uh, that's what we do here. And we're only able to do that because of your support, because yep. of your generosity. So if you're giving today, you can text IROC in the amount to 28950. That's IROC in the amount to 28950. Five zero. You cannot beat God given, no, no matter, matter how hard you try. Next Sunday, we're throwing it back. We're going back old school for Palm Sunday. I'm so Pastor excited. Mike just said, just, yeah. Even if you're watching us online, go ahead and just dress up in your living room. I know that's right. put your, put Tag your, us on social put your media. Church hat, yeah, tag us on yeah. social media. Put your church hat on. Uh, and we're going to have a great time. Uh, communion is, and baby dedications as well. Uh, tomorrow morning. Devo Energy. Devo Energy. energy. Yes. Y'all, the spirit was, so, I don't have no voice. Uh, yeah, so that, you, you that's all it. we can give you right. Devo she, Energy. One thing Elder Deary going to do is participate. She going to worship. Period. She going to shout. All day. She going to wave her phone. With all that. That's what we're supposed to yep. do. So Devo Energy tomorrow morning, 721 a.m. Central Standard that's Time. Right. 
uh, all over the world. We're going to be rocking. All over the world. Shout all out to world. our family from yes. UK, UK in the building. Uh, yes. uh, we have folks that came from near and far. Yes. And so we are so honored that we get a chance to worship awesome. with you. That is awesome. Uh, man, God is doing something special. Yes, he is. You've already ran down the list. Palm Sunday, Easter Sunday, yes. woo, woo. this upcoming Sunday, this Tuesday, you don't want to miss City Group's leader training that's happening starting at 7 o'clock with PMJ L-I-V-E Live. Live. Listen, family, we love you so much. We thank God for your presence, for locking in with us. It's not too late. You can still send this link to somebody right. if the message blessed you. Share with friends, share with coworkers, share with family so they can be blessed as well. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me down Don't here by myself. Me. That we are to be yeah. lifters. Yeah. That word bless me. I want to hear it again already. Uh, so thank you so much. We love you. God bless you. Until next time. Peace. Love you.